Australia, we are being hit hard by the influenza virus. In today's episode of Dr. Nora, I take you through everything you need to know about this year's flu season and how to protect yourself. With over 87,000 cases this year alone, and that is right at the time of filming, it is June currently, there have been over 87,000 cases of influenza virus spreading across the Australian country. Now, usually we tend to see a peak of influenza virus coming in, in the cooler months, like say August, for example, but we're seeing that peak happen a lot earlier. Now, why is that? Well, we know it's because of a couple of things. Over the previous few years, we've had another big virus happen around the world, and that's caused a lot of us to go into lockdown and social distancing, and so rates of influenza virus have actually been really, really small. And that's because we're not mingling with each other, we're not spreading our germs, but now that lockdowns have been lifted and travel is unrestricted, we are now mingling with one another, and a lot of us are catching the terrible flu virus. But Doc, how do I know if it's flu versus how it's the common cold? Well, influenza virus is pretty nasty. For those of you out there who've had it, you will probably be feeling really, really unwell. You may typically be bed bound, staying in bed for a few days, not being able to move, you'll have fever, chills, rigors, which means you're shivering and you feel so hot. You might even have sneezing, coughing, it might be productive in nature, you might be producing a lot of phlegm. You may also be just feeling really tired and lethargic and having no energy to do anything whatsoever. Now, comparing this to the common cold, which is also going around as well, because let's face it, there are a lot of viruses happening right now. This may present in ways where you might be sneezing, having a cough, having a sore throat, but you may not necessarily have any temperature. Now, just for you guys out there, what does temperature mean? Well, it means having a temperature over 38 degrees Celsius. So for me personally, I've seen a lot of people who have had temperatures of 39 degrees, and I'm thinking, you know what? You really, really should be in bed. But we'll come on to that in a second with how we treat it. So Dr. Nora, how do we even diagnose influenza virus or even the common cold? Well, typically you might think, you know what, I'm gonna go to the doctor, I'm gonna go and check out my symptoms and see what's happening. And yes, that is one way you can get tested. And generally speaking, if the doctor examines you, they may be able to differentiate whether it is a viral infection or whether it's a bacterial infection and whether you need to have antibiotics. And we'll come on to antibiotics in a little bit later, but certainly they may also wish to perform a nasal swab. So very similar to what you guys may have had in the past, we perform a nasal swab, which basically goes inside of the nose and we can see what type of virus you have, whether it's influenza A, B, or even the common cold viruses as well. Now, typically, a lot of people will be able to self-diagnose because they might think, you know what, I'm just gonna stay in bed, I'm gonna have some paracetamol, I'm gonna rest up and I'll see how things go. But there are obviously people who are more uh, immunocompromised and may need to see a doctor ASAP. And these people may be those who are over the age of 65, pregnant ladies, or those people who might have any other kind of comorbidities. For example, they might have heart problems or diabetes or things that are just not well controlled. And it's so important for those guys to go in and see their doctor to have a diagnosis, to make sure they don't need any antibiotics because it might not be a viral infection and instead it might be a bacterial infection. But for those of you out there who are, you know, pretty healthy and, you know, aside from the flu and the common cold, you might just wish to rest at home. And this is actually something that we would appreciate as doctors if you do do, because as what happened to me recently, somebody waltzed into my clinic and has spread all of their germs to everyone. And unfortunately, I was sick, my staff were sick, and the net impact of that is that we have to take time off work, and unfortunately we can't cater for patients who are coming in with urgent health care needs because there simply isn't a doctor there. So what may be a simple viral infection that one person may present with actually can have a net impact to a lot of people in the healthcare profession. And hence we get lots of people spreading their bugs and so on. And so if you yourself do feel like you may be having the flu or you might have a common cold, the best possible thing you could do if you need to see a doctor is to call in advance and say, hey, I've got these symptoms. Is it okay if I come in? Here's a heads up. Because your doctor or your receptionist may advise you to say, one, wear a mask, or two, they may put you in a special room by yourself so you're not hanging around the waiting room waiting for your appointment and spreading your germ to others. So this is just a little bit of courtesy for you guys out there. If you do feel sick, please call up your doctor in advance to make sure that they themselves are well enough to see you for that particular day. Now it's also important to know how contagious you are if you have got the influenza virus. Now certainly for the first 24 hours prior to your symptoms even coming on, you are considered as being contagious, which means that you can spread your germs to the next person. And similarly for the week after when your symptoms first start, you are still contagious as well. So bear that in mind if you are at home or if you're planning to go to work, then please bear in mind that you may actually be presenting your symptoms to other people. And if that person's pregnant or if they're immunocompromised, you're really not doing anyone a favor. So the best thing for you guys is the treatment of influenza virus or even the common cold, I'm going to lump them together, is to stay at home and rest. 
it is super important that when your doctor says to you, you know what, you've got a viral infection, the best thing you can do is TLC and rest and hydrate, please listen to them. It is really important for you just to stay home, rest, drink plenty of water, lemon and honey if you can drink that, take some paracetamol, some painkillers to reduce that temperature down. It's really important for you to reduce that temperature down as much as you can. And if you're unsure about how to do this, make sure you call up your doctor for some advice to let you know how to take your medicines or even speak to your local chemist as well. You may, if you've got a sore throat, you may wish to gargle some salt water. Really important not to swallow the salt water, um, just to gargle it in the back of your throat. Now this isn't suitable for children, but certainly for adults, if you gargle some salt water and then spit it out, your throat will be a lot more relieved. Other remedies you can use at home if you do have a temperature is to use a cold flannel on your forehead or on the back of the neck to help to drop that temperature down. And remember, your appetite probably will be little to non-existent at this time, which is quite normal, but as long as you're keeping yourself hydrated and keeping your fluids up, then gradually your appetite will come back to play and you will feel a lot more stronger in a few days. Now, typically speaking, these sorts of viruses can last one to two weeks in duration. And like I said, it's really important for you to stay at home. And if you do have to go out, please make sure you wear your mask and stay away from any big group so that we can try to curtail the spread of the influenza virus as much as we can. Okay, Dr. Nora, so I think I've got the flu virus, but what are my red flags? What do I really, really need to look out for? Well, certainly if you are feeling really unwell and you're not getting any better despite all those lovely measures that you've done so far, it might be time to pick up the phone and speak to your doctor. Similarly, if you think you've got a cough and it's lasting over three weeks or longer, or even if you're bringing up lots of blood when you're coughing, again, that's the time to have, come and speak to your doctor. And again, if you belong in one of those um, special groups such as pregnant people or over 65 years old or immunocompromised people, then again, it's super important for you to see your doctor just in case there are any other treatments that can be offered to you. Now as a general practitioner I see a lot of patients coming in with unfortunately the common cold or a flu virus, I mean hopefully not too many of those but yes it happens and a lot of people come in they say all right doc I've just got this sore throat and you know I've, I've got this really important trip coming up in two days time and I just need to get better really quickly, can I have some antibiotics please? And okay, I'll examine the patient and being a diligent doctor that I am, I'll take the temperature, do all of their examinations and I'll find that there is no signs of any bacterial infection. And so unfortunately I have to decline the request for antibiotics because as you guys probably all know, antibiotics do not work on viral infections. Now. The problem is, is that some doctors believe that it does, or they succumb to the patients who do say, I just need some antibiotics for this virus. And what happens is that patient then has a positive reinforcement that they've received these antibiotics before. And because the natural duration of the viral infection tends to only last about one week, which is probably the duration of their antibiotics, they then make an association in their head that the antibiotics they were given last year work for their viral infection. And so you know what, if I go and speak to that doctor next door, maybe they'll give me some antibiotics. I know they definitely worked for me last year when I had them. But guys, let's face it, antibiotics do not work for viruses. I'm gonna repeat this a million times because they really do not. It's a totally different pathogen. Antibiotics only work for bacterial infections. If you are having a viral infection, there's plenty of viruses out there. Um, if you do suffer from a viral infection, then there are specific antiviral medications we can give you, not necessarily for the common cold, for example, but say, for example, you've got just say herpes zoster virus, then yes, we can give you antiviral medications for that particular virus. But certainly for the common cold, your traditional penicillin-based antibiotics are just not simply going to cut it. Now, the problem is if you continue to have antibiotics like this um, for viral infections, it will mean a number of things for yourself and they're not good. So here's my reasons why you should not be asking your doctor for antibiotics for a viral infection. Number one, they will not cure you. Let's just face it, those patients who felt that the antibiotics did them good probably was just because their virus was coming to its natural end and they felt better and they just happened to associate it with that. Number two, they will not have any positive impact on your body for a viral infection. They won't help you to reduce the chance of catching another virus. They won't give you anything like that. And thirdly, they will give you side effects. How many of you out there have had antibiotics and had some really bad, terrible tummy, maybe some runny stool, maybe a bit of thrush even because it wipes out your good bacteria? You know what? It's just really not worth it. For a medicine that you're taking that doesn't treat the actual cause, there is no reason to take this antibiotic. And let's face it, the final most important reason why you shouldn't have antibiotics for a viral infection is because it can affect you later in life. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, we are creating collectively as a population super bugs, which means that these antibiotics that we're having unnecessarily 
are going to be able to mutate and they're going to be able to be resistant to bacterial infections later on. So not only are you going to be in trouble later on when you need those antibiotics because you're really sick now and you really need them because you've got a bacterial infection, those antibiotics are no longer going to work for you. And not only that, but as a population as well, antibiotics are really just going to run their course and unfortunately nothing is going to be suitable for us because we've used them unnecessarily in situations where we haven't needed them. And these bacteria have now adapted and they've become super bacteria and they do not respond to antibiotics. So we definitely do not want to be creating any antibiotic resistance for yourself or for the population because when we need antibiotics and they work, they really, really work. Now, of course, you must be thinking, well, Dr. Nora, viruses can sometimes convert into bacterial infections. And to a degree, this may be correct. So, for example, somebody who has got a viral infection, like the flu virus, for example, or the common cold, they may then develop what we call a secondary bacterial infection. Now, because your body is so weak and your immune system is so low, you may then pick up another bacterial bug or you might pick up a bug from somebody else and you may end up with what we call a secondary bacterial infection. Now, this can take the form of many things like a tonsillitis, for example, where you've got lots of pus on the back of your throat with raging temperatures or it may even take the form of a chest infection which means pneumonia where when the doctor listens to your chest they can hear lots of gurgling lots of crackles and so you have back a bacterial infection inside of your chest now for these particular patients it is important for you to go and see your doctor because they're the only ones who can diagnose whether the virus has now developed into a secondary bacterial infection and for that population or cohort of patients they will need antibiotics to treat their bacterial infection Oh, that was a lot to take in. But Dr. Nora, what can I do to protect myself from people out there who might be coughing or spluttering? And how can I make my immune system nice and strong? Well, I'm going to give you my rundown of how to keep yourself nice and healthy during this flu season. First up, make sure that you keep your immune system nice and strong, which means having regular exercise, which could be just 30 minutes of walking a day for five days a week, provided you checked it through with your doctor. It could also mean sleeping really, really well. So we know that having a good night's sleep, seven to eight hours of sleep, helps to actually rebuild our immune system. And so if we manage to get a good night's kip, our immune system is definitely going to be a lot stronger. Eating healthy, of course, what else would I say? Eating healthy, making sure you're having a full, beautiful, balanced diet with lots of fruit and vegetables, plenty of vitamin C to pack in through this winter season. Also making sure you're keeping yourself hydrated and trying to reduce the amount of stress that you have on your plate. These are all factors that you can do to help to build up your immune system and make them nice and strong. And I'll leave a couple of links in the description below of how to boost your immune system naturally. Other things you can do to help protect yourself from this flu season is to certainly keep away from people who are sick. Yes, guys, 1.5 meters, stay away from me. And if you notice somebody's sick at work, just say to them, hey, you know what? I heard you're not feeling very well. Maybe you want to go home and rest because surely if you've got the air conditioning on or if you, you're cohabiting a, a desk, for example, you're definitely increasing your chance of getting sick from that person if they're coughing and spluttering and sneezing all over you. So maybe just keep your distance from that person. In addition to this, it might be worthwhile just wearing a mask if you are in having to be in a crowded place, for example, in a supermarket or in a place where there's lots of people around you, because certainly these are breeding grounds where lots of people will be coughing and spluttering. But if you manage to keep your distance and wear a mask and hopefully they're wearing a mask too, that will hopefully reduce your risk of getting influenza virus. And finally, another thing that you can help to protect yourself is to consider having the flu vaccination. Now, there have been lots of vaccinations all over the past couple of years, but the flu vaccine has been around for many, many, many years. And we know that it can help to reduce the incidence of the flu virus itself. Now, as general practitioners, we do recommend having your vaccination early on before the flu season starts or even at the beginning of the flu season, because it does take a couple of weeks for it to start working in its full efficacy. So there you have it. There is my roundup for the influenza virus and the common cold and how to keep yourself protected. And I hope that you guys manage to stay away from those nasty bugs that are going round. As always, if you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to drop me a line in the comment section below. But for now, take care and stay healthy. Thank you.